GFTK presents VDW Motor Systems for Professionals. VDW815 Plus 2 Component Epoxy Paving Joint Mortar for Flags and Slabs. Mortar for the grouting of surfaces like garden pathways, entrances and patios. It is especially suitable for high performance in narrow joints, larger than 3 mm, and ceramic patio elements. The professional installation of which is a requirement for solid grouting and is also shown below. For a professional, easy and quick application of VDW815 Plus Mortar, you will need both a water and a power supply and a suitable twin paddle mixer with counter rotating paddles. Furthermore, a long hose with a spray nozzle. A rubber squeegee as well as a clean coconut fibre brush. These tools are available from GFTK. Please make sure you wear protective gloves and protective glasses during the application. To prepare the laying of ceramic patio elements in a bonded mortar bedding, a suitable aggregate such as basalt chippings two-fifths is required. And for the binder we recommend VDW 480 bedding compound. Mix the chippings and the VDW 480 bedding compound to a bedding mortar until ready for processing. Depending on the estimated traffic load, a mixing ratio of 1 to 6 to 1 to 3 is needed. In addition with water, an earth moist mortar is produced. The ready-to-use water permeable bedding mortar is now poured onto the surface and worked in according to local conditions. We recommend jointing from the highest to the lowest points. In order to achieve an adequate bond between the bedding and the paving material, a rear side application of the paving material with a bonding slurry is necessary. We recommend VDW 495 bonding slurry. VDW 495 bonding slurry is a ready-to-use product. 25 kilograms of finely grained powder should be mixed with a maximum quantity of 7 litres of water. Both components should be mixed with a suitable mixer until the slurry is homogeneous, smooth and semi-fluid. The bonding slurry is applied evenly to the entire rear side of the elements, for example with a brush. Excess mortar at the edges of the element should be removed in order to keep the joints open for the jointing process. The items prepared in this manner are placed onto the bedding mortar, aligned and fixed. While doing so, every single element should be corrected appropriate to height and then leveled to the overall surface. Finished! After 24 hours, the prepared surface can be jointed. Spacers may only be plugged from above into the joints. Hence, they can be easily removed again before grouting. In the bucket, you will find the components of the mortar, as well as a booklet on the lower side of the lid. All technical information, as well as other technical details, and instructions about the epoxy paving joint mortar for flags and slabs, is contained. Thoroughly pre-mix the aggregate, mineral compound, in the bucket with the twin paddle mixer. Then the binder from the bottle is added. Please make sure the whole bottle is emptied into the bucket. Both components should now thoroughly be mixed until smooth and homogeneous. No water should be added to the mix. Fully saturate the paved surface before starting the application and ensure this condition is maintained throughout the work. This eases the jointing and prevents the mortar from sticking to the surface. After thorough mixing until smooth and homogeneous, the mortar is instantly poured onto the pre-wetted surface and into the open joints. The mortar is now thoroughly worked into the joints using a rubber squeegee, ideally in a diagonal direction where it self-compacts. By spraying water, the flowability of the mortar will be improved. We recommend filling the joints from the highest to the lowest points. 
Remove any excess mortar residue from the pavement surface by spraying lightly with water from a hose. Be careful not to wash out the freshly applied mortar in the joints. Be careful to clean the paved surface towards areas not yet jointed but saturated and do not allow any water containing residues to pond, stand, dry out or run off over completed areas. From time to time, especially when leaving the working area, make sure to clean the soles of your shoes that will prevent footprints and stains on adjacent surfaces. Finally, remove any remaining fine residues, again with a damp coconut fibre brush. By doing so, the surface of the joints could also be smoothened or adapted as required. Do not brush any dry mortar residue into unfilled joints. Perfect result! A long-lasting, solid and permeable joint with VDW815+. You will find further information and a whole range of products under